Today I'll be modding the SK64. I apologize for the bad webcam and mic quality, they were like 30 bucks total. The tools I used to mod my keyboard were uh, nail clippers, screwdriver to open the case, tweezers, very helpful and necessary, uh, stem holder, not required but very helpful. Keycap holder, preferably a wired one. Switch puller, a thin brush, a lube like a uh, 205 grade zero. We could use this on the stabilizers and the switches, so really good value. Plastic bag to lube the springs. Uh, switch films and a switch opener most of the things I have here was included in a kit it came in a box like this and included in that kit was also a lubing station which keeps the process clean and more organized. I don't have a second keyboard uh, to mod so I'll just show you the process of uh, I went through to mod this keyboard. It'll make your keyboard from sounding like this To sounding like this. Okay, first we'll take off the keycaps so that we could unscrew the keyboard. And it's very necessary to take all the keycaps off and all the switches out because some of the stabilizers can't be uh, taken out unless you have the top plate unscrewed from the PCB. And the SK64 is a bit weird in the you have to take off. Oh, well, it's weird in that the PCB is screwed onto the uh, top plate from the back. Like the GK61 you could unscrew the top plate from the PCB just from the screws on the top plate. So it's quite a lot more convenient that way. But here I'm not taking everything off since I've already lubed my stabilizers. On the SK64 there's 8 screws but I only have 4 of them screwed in. You could take a screenshot here to see all the locations of the screws. Just Keep your place screws somewhere safe so that you won't lose them. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, another material you'll need is band-aids. It's used in the holy mod, and also the band-aid mod. You put the band-aid between the plate and the stabilizers so they don't wobble as much. The SK64 has a pretty tight USB-C hole, like over here. 
so it's going to be hard to take out but I've sanded mine down or I filed mine down so that it's not as tight so mine will be easier to take out make sure you don't snap off the type C port on the PCB and here as you can see I put case foam in mine and you just have to make sure your case foam isn't conductive well actually in this case it doesn't really matter since we're going to be doing the tempest mod which has tape on the back of the PCB so it doesn't matter if the foam is conductive or not it wouldn't be touching the PCB anyways and the tempest mod is basically just taking a less sticky tape and putting it on the back of the PCB in my case I use masking tape I use two layers here which means uh, I just put two layers of tape and you have to make sure the tape like press down the tape around the switches so that it hugs it tightly that way the sound will be deeper I guess and taking out the stabilizers is as simple as this uh, on the SK64 it's plate mount stabilizer which means they're mounted to the top of the plate instead of screwed into the PCB there's a little latch on the stabilizer you just have to press down on it and then they pop out oh. you have to take out the switch first and then you can pop out the stabilizers this one is a stabilizer that you could take out uh, without unscrewing the back plate but like the spacebar the enter key those are two stabilizers that you can't take out without unscrewing the back plate and as you can see here I have a bit of band-aid and a bit of tape on the PCB or on the top plate which makes it so my stabilizers aren't as rattly they fit snugly into the plate after you have taken out all the stabilizers we will begin to clip, lube, and holy mod them since I already modded my stabilizers I'll take one of the spare ones and show you how to mod it these stabilizers are the Duroc piano stabilizers that I bought since I couldn't make the stock stabilizers sound that good The first thing we're going to do is to the stabilizers is clip them. And here, I'm not sure if you can see, there's some extra legs that poke out. There's four legs on the stabilizers and we're going to clip two of them off. To clip the stabilizers, this is where the nail clippers come in handy. We're going to be cli clipping uh, We're going to be clipping this leg and this leg and you can tell which leg is which by seeing which one uh, which of the legs poke out two of the legs lay flat and the two of the legs kind of poke out so whenever you type on the stabilizers it would it would cushion the bottom out which makes it kind of mushy and not satisfying Once you clip the stabilizers, they will look like this. And the next step is holy modding the stabilizers, which is putting a tiny strip of band-aid in the hole of the stabilizer so that the wire wouldn't be touching the plastic when you type. This makes it so you could get rid of most of the rattle and ticking that the stabilizers have. And I actually forgot to list one of the materials you need a pair of scissors here I have a pair of scissors and a band-aid and make sure the band-aid is fabric not plastic since the plastic ones don't provide much cushioning at all 
we're just going to cut a tiny strip and make sure the strip fits in the stabilizer or fits in the stem you don't want the strip to be too thick and you don't want this band-aid to be touching the walls of the stem it will create a mushy feeling that will never go away even after you have broken them in and this is where the tweezers will come in handy before you do this make sure your stabilizers don't have any lube on them since that way if they have lube on them this band-aid won't stick to it and it'll cause problems here I'm taking off the backing of the band-aid to make sure your stabilizers don't have any lube on them make sure they're either fresh or you clean them off with soap and water and there's two ends there's two ends to the stem there's an end with two holes on one side this is the one with two holes on one side and there's an end with only one hole on that side this side is a side with only one hole so we're going to be putting in the band-aid once you have the band-aid in the stem you just cut off some of the excess you take your pair of scissors you snip off like half of the excess poking off and then as I mentioned earlier the stem has one side has two holes you just tuck the remaining band-aid into that hole and make sure it's uh, make sure it's tight in there so that it doesn't poke out and make your stabilizers feel mushy or stuck. And there we go. That's the holy mod done on one of the stems. And then we proceed to lube the stem. You take your 205 grade zero or dielectric grease and you take your brush and apply a very thin coat and what you do is take some lube and then either use a uh, either use a plate or the edge of a container to wipe off the excess lube the perfect amount is when you can't see the white on the brush like this you can't really see the white on the brush that's the lube you make sure and then you just coat each side of the stabilizer with the lube After you're done with the stem, you move on to the stabilizer housing. You do the same thing again, just get a really thin coat of lube on your brush and lube every wall of the housing. And there you go, you have a housing and a stem done. Then you put the stem into the housing and on one side of the housing there's a hole and on the other side there isn't. Make sure the side with the hole matches with the side of the stem that has two holes.
he just slotted it in. And if you did it wrong, you could tell since uh, the stabilizers won't work if you have it the wrong way. Now that you're completely stemming the housing, you lube the wire. Here you take the wire, and on the wire you apply a generous coat of 205 grade zero. You make sure you lube each leg of the wire and a little bit of the long part of the wire since that part is going to be clipped into the stabilizer. And this should look something like this. And now you take that wire and you line it up with the bottom hole of the stem and just slot it in. Once you have slot in the stabilizer, or you, once you have a slot in the wire, you take it and clip it to the one side. It'll make a clip sound or feel, so you'll know if it's in or not. And that's one side of the stabilizer done. You just repeat it for all the stabilizers. And then once you have completed all the stabilizers, you put them in the board to test them for rattle. Next will be the final step of the mod. You take your switches and you take your switch opener and then you just pop it in and open the switch and make sure the wire doesn't bounce out and you lose it. The parts we're going to be losing are the spring, the stem, and the bottom housing. The lubing station helps you organize everything and to lube the springs you just take all of them and put them in the plastic bag that, have, that I mentioned earlier. To lube the springs you take your plastic bag and dip your brush into the 205 grade zero and put a couple swabs on the plastic bag or in the plastic bag I mean. And then you just rub that around until the lube is evenly distributed throughout the bag. And after that, you just put all your springs into the bag. You blow a little bit of air in it. So that it'll be blown up. And you just shake your, the bag with the springs in it. Make sure you don't massage the springs since you might massage too hard and mess with the the tightness and springiness of the spring. And that's how you bag lube switch springs. After you have lubed the spring, you move on to lubing the bottom housing and the stem. You take your brush again and put a really thin layer of 205 grade zero. And watch out here since 205 grade zero is a pretty thick lube. So it's really easy to over lube your switches. Less is more guys. You just brush against the two sides of the housing. Like here you can see, for the SK64 at least, a optical switch, there's no leaf. So the only points of contact are uh, this wall and this wall. You can see rails in here and you just lube those rails. I brush it once, twice, and then I use the other side of the brush to brush the other side, other slider or other rail once, twice. And then without 
putting lube on your brush again, you just make sure you lube the uh, pole inside of the bottom housing and you lube the bottom housing or you lube the floor of the bottom housing and then you also put your brush in the center hole to make sure the stem could smoothly travel down the shaft and that's your bottom housing done next we go on to move the stems you take your stem holder and just grip the stem with it you could grip the stem with your fingers but it's a lot more difficult and your finger will get messy with the lube and now this part we relube our brush thin coats and we lube each wall of the stem make sure you don't see any white parts on the stem white parts means uh, you're over lubing it you should only be able to see a slight sheen after you have lubed each wall you lube the bottom of the walls so once you've moved this stem you could assemble your switch now you take your spring with the tweezers and then you put it onto the bottom housing and then you pop in your stem and since this is an optical switch it doesn't matter which way the, fa the stem faces at least for the linear version since there's no legs to go in contact with a, a contact leaf a normal switch has and this part is optional you could take your switch films and put it on the switches so that it will be tighter and it wouldn't wobble or rattle as much so some switches are already pretty tight so you won't have to use a uh, switch on for those you just take your switch film and put it on the switch then you pop back on the top housing and the reason we don't lose the top housing is we already have lube on the stem and we have lube on the bottom housing so lubing the top housing is either going to be very minimal or it's going to be over lube and you don't want to over lube your switches because if your switch is over lube whenever you type there will be like a wet sound and it the keys will be inconsistent you just align the LED part of the top housing with a hole in the bottom housing and you just click on your switch and make sure your switch is tight since with since with switch films sometimes it's hard to close up your switch and after you have lubed your switch you could put it back into the PCB and test to make sure your switch film isn't getting in the way if the switch films are in the way when you press down there will be a crunchy feeling and you will feel that something is in the way of the stem to fix that you just reopen the switch and align this uh, switch film again you pop the PCB back into the keyboard and assemb assemble your keyboard again and that's the end of my tutorial of modding your keyboard